Today's project is this rather nice classic Mac, the uh, LC-475, which is in perfect working condition as near as I can tell, except for one thing. If we turn it on, great, we get the chime, fantastic. However, if I unplug the external speaker, There's a teensy tiny little quiet chime. And that is the sign that something's not quite right. Now, if we just open things up, take a look inside, you have a pretty, pretty standard looking system. Power supply, VRAM, system RAM, CPU, clock battery. We've not got the hard drives or floppy drives connected to them. We've got the fans and speakers. And I've already been in here trying to fix things a little bit. And you can see that I've recapped the, um, the power supply, so we have a bunch of tantalum capacitors in now. A couple heat sinks on the CPU, which is just barely warm to touch from a few seconds of being on. But the question is, what's going on with the audio? So you do a little bit of Googling, and you find that this is the chip responsible for the audio. You find suggestions, you know, dead audio on an LC-475 is not an uncommon problem. You find a couple suggestions, you know, put in the clock battery, reset the pram for 10 times, done that, no change. This this chip, the egret, something like that, the, the audio chip, some other stuff too, but the audio, but for our purposes, the audio chip. So that's, you know, have you tried replacing the capacitor around it? Yeah. Um, sometimes capacitor stuff gets underneath. Have you, you know, desoldered it? Some people have had luck desoldering and resoldering it. I haven't done that, but I've used these uh, little tooth cleaning brushes to get underneath and between all of the legs and, and really cleaned it out good. And, and there was a lot of gunk in there, but we got all that out. But, you know, the, the thing, you know, some people are saying, you know, replace that chip. And, you know, A, if you want to replace that, you have to have a dead everything else. And, and B, if you don't have a dead everything else, then then that chip is basically unobtainium. But but also, I am getting audio. It comes through the external speaker, it comes through the internal speaker, just very quietly. And so, after a, after a fair bit of googling and reading forum posts, what I heard about is that just inside the edge of the case, where it's hard to see on camera, there is a little amplifier chip. And that amplifier chip takes the audio from here and a the audio from the audio chip and a, a voltage DC voltage level signal and amplifies it to go to the speaker. And for the next bit, we'll just need to pull the logic board out. So just get the external speaker out the way. Get the power supply out the way. But we're gonna need the power supply, so take that out as well. Um, there are supposed to be little plastic clips that keep the motherboard in place, but my plastic clips have broken. So I've been keeping it in place with a bit of Lego. And once that's out, and those things are out, and just get that out of the way as well, then the logic board will just slide back, and it'll slide back far enough that it just then lifts straight out. So we'll get that out. Uh, we might need the speaker as well since we're messing with audio stuff. So I'll grab the speaker and then we'll we'll get the rest of the case out the way. All right, logic board. You know what? We will zoom in as well. And by zoom in, I mean replace the lens or, or swap the lens. Okay, so we've got the logic board back again. Blip. It's this little chip here responsible for sending the audio to the speaker, and we can verify that with a good old continuity test. And we take the um, audio and of the speaker in. Well, this is awkward. There we go. And then the other one. There we go. And so we have a direct connection from the speaker to that chip. Now, what's interesting is one of the classic debugging steps on a vintage computer 
is you go and feel for what's hot. You know, and I put a couple little heat sinks on the CPU because you know, now we're running without a fan and all that stuff. And so now, now everything's on, but we can't tell it's on. Well, I mean, you start feeling things and CPU's feeling a little warm. But what really outshines everything is if you leave it long enough, the audio amplifier chip will get too hot to the touch. So we'll get a little crappy eBay infrared thermometer. 20 degrees, 20 degrees. 20 degrees, 20 degrees, and we'll leave that a minute, and then and then you'll see the uh, how hot it really gets. So it's been a minute or two with things turned on, and if we just restart, we hear the very quiet chime, and we find a pretty warm chip at something like 40 degrees and rising, 44, 42. It will get too hot to the touch, whereas the CPU is is only mildly warm to the touch in comparison. And so I I think with the uh, yep pretty warm, I think that it's you know following the the rule of what's hot is broken. I think the amplifier chip is is dead, and it's either dead because it died itself. Or, or maybe the, the audio chip is, is sending something that it doesn't like. But fortunately, you can still get the audio chip in the same package. And so we are going to try replacing it. Very carefully. So we'll just get this other stuff out of the way. And so th this chip is a um, Philips DA7052, which is a, I think this is like a SOP8 package. Anyway, th this is about a, a pound or two to get those, so it's, it's not too bad. And I've never, I've never desoldered something like this before. What I'm hoping to do is put a big blob of solder across all of the legs and pull it all up one side at a time. And um, I'm hoping, hoping that works. So we just get the soldering iron ready. Here we go. So what's happened is it is lifted up so you can get underneath, but the, the legs still have, have contact. So we're going to have to do this again and pull it up further. Like that. Now we can push that back down and repeat the same on the other side, except now, because it's desoldered on the one side, when this side gets liquid, it should just all... It should be very easy to, to remove at this point. There we go. Now that is my maybe broken DA7502. Now we just have to clean up the solder pads. I don't think I've damaged anything. Now we just take the new chip and solder it on. For these little packages, 
The side with side one has a slightly different profile shape, so it's square and then a chamfered edge and then down. And the leftmost pin on the chamfered edge is pin one. You just find that on the new chip, which makes it want to go something like that. And I think the way we want to solder this down is to try and tack one leg and then on one side and then do the other side. Okay, one leg tacked. What we'll do is we'll switch to the pointier tip for the soldering iron and we'll get a little bit of flux on there. This is not really how you're supposed to put on flux, but YOLO. That will be good enough for that. Old tip comes off. New tip goes on. And we'll get the new tip to start heating up. Hopefully, at least I've not made it worse. That's the old chip. You go over there. Probably should have undone the clock battery. You meant to do that. Whoops. Add the power supply back. And the uh, speaker. Get the power cable. Now, my dream is that the sound is coming through strong. My fear is no sound. I will accept it's as it was. It fixed it. Yes, let's go. This is where I would have liked to end the story with everything working perfectly. However, after about an hour while playing with things, very loud with all the background noise. I hope that's not the, uh, the same issue again. So I didn't notice it until I was reviewing the recording, but the audio towards the end there was really quiet and not being picked up by the microphone. And I think if we listen to it start up again, it has quieted down some. I don't know why. And it happened so gradually, I didn't even really realize the sound went back to the way it was. Well, almost the way it was. It, it, it did quiet significantly. And if we just turn things back on, it, it really is quite quiet still and, and only barely, barely audible. But it's a little bit louder than before. I think this amplifier is a little bit stronger than the previous one. So I'm effectively where I was, except the the amplifier chip is actually not getting hot at all, so that that's quite good. Maybe maybe resoldering the defect two would help. Maybe it wouldn't. You know, maybe why it worked before because it got heated up significantly by all the soldering work going on in that corner. Maybe something gotten into a via. Although I've you know tested the vias with the multimeter and couldn't find anything. Every tested out. Unfortunately, there are no schematics for the LC-475, so you can't test things out fully. The same DFAC2 is used on the 575 and the Color Classic, but on both those systems, the audio amplification doesn't happen on the logic board. It happens in a different location. The, the best thing I can think to do at this point is really just put things back together and part of the thing that makes everything so noisy is it's, it's actually to make it so hard to hear is actually the dang fan because if you, you 
turn it on with the fan on. The fan is really very loud. And if we take the fan and, and put it through one of the, the Noxia Low Noise fan adapters, it is significantly quieter. And so I think that's what we're doing. You know, the heat sinks on the CPU will help there. The hard drive's not being used, so that won't be generating heat. So I think it'll be fine with the uh, quieter fan. And in that case, off and then back on. I can at least still hear the, the speaker over the fan, although it's not great. Uh, another option would be replacing defect too. But I think for now, we'll just finish putting things together. Um, one last test. Quiet, but at least audible. You can check that things are working. That's it. Thanks for watching.